Did you ever get the feeling when you read the papers the world is caving in? That the animal part of the human heart is finally gonna win? Well, it just may be that what they see are the growing pains of liberty And the world ain't coming to an end, my friend The world is coming to a start I feel it in my heart The world is coming to a start That is a piece of a, of, of a little song, a fun song that I learned when I was in uh, high school in my senior year from a Broadway show called Pearly. And I got to sing that song on stage and it was uh, a remarkable time in my life because it was also a, a time of, of um, uh, you know, wanting to kill myself, wanting to commit suicide because I was afraid, because I was confused, because I didn't know where I belonged, because I had zero sense of self-worth. Um, yet these small things like this particular song and my opportunity to sing it on stage in front of uh, an auditorium full of people during the, uh, the high school um, annual production, um, it's just these little things that, that kept me going, kept me alive. Uh, and the message in that song, together with a book that um, my best friend in high school gave me, uh, The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale, um, in it he said, change your thoughts and change your world. Now, I didn't know, I wasn't sophisticated enough or educated enough to know that you could change your thoughts, um, but I knew that I could change my world. And so I bring you this message today because uh, we are facing a time right now of um, high uncertainty, high anxiety, high stress for many, many people, and um, it's making us afraid. Now, a lot of people out there are telling you, hey, don't be afraid, don't listen to this, don't listen to that. Well, my message to you is, um, you know what? Be afraid. Be aware of, of your emotions, right? Fear is an emotion. But yet, don't be controlled by that fear or don't let your fear control your actions. And we'll get to more of that in a moment. Um, because the, the worst thing that we can do, not only for ourselves, but for our families and our neighbors and our co-workers and colleagues and, and the people that are counting on us for business and, and uh, whether, regardless of what, what it is that you do in your, in your business or your industry, um, people are counting on you, people are looking up to you for something, be it a smile in the morning, be it uh, to deliver a cup of uh, coffee to your spouse, your husband, your wife, uh, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or your kids, they're looking up to you because they're afraid. Um, there's a lot of noise out there and rightfully we don't know who to believe. And um, I'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't believe or who you should or shouldn't listen to. You decide that you get to decide that on your own, just like you get to make every other decision on your own. But what I wanted to, to do is, is record this message for you to let you know that fear is, is it's normal, right? It's, you're a human being. Um, we're, we're facing unprecedented times for many of us. Uh, we've lived in, you know, throughout the years in, in a variety of situations, but, you know, I, I, I've been through some stuff in my life, but I've never been through a situation like this where uh, it seems like the whole world is on total lockdown and we're being quarantined and we're being asked to stay in our homes and they're closing the bars and the restaurants. In other words, the life that we know, the, the day-to-day -day living that we know is being altered drastically from one night to the next. You get up and every day it's a new situation in the morning. Um, you know, different news, different different you know, gyms are closing and, and it's just, you know, even for me, right, I'm a professional. I, I teach and I guide others, executives and, and executive couples, how to strengthen the relationships and executives, how to, how to perform better in the marketplace. Yet for me, it's, it's unsettling and it's okay. So as long as you recognize that you are going through that, as long as you recognize the emotion of fear, the emotion of uh, that feeling of uncertainty, um, but then what do you do with it, right? In other words, take a step back from it and say, okay, I'm afraid. I, I feel uncertain. I feel anxious. I feel stressed. 
recognize that. That's step number one. Number two is to, for you to decide what you're going to do with it or whether you're going to let the fear based emotions guide your actions moving forward in other words are you going to go out into the stores and and you know just try and collect as much as you can of everything and anything regardless of of you know whether there's enough left for anybody else or regardless of whether you actually need the product or, or service simply because you think that oh my gosh you know this is the last time i'm going to see this this uh package of toilet paper and so i better grab it um, you can let fear guide those actions. You can go in and, and be angry and you can yell at the people in the stores and, and yell at your neighbors and yell at the people that are in, in traffic with you um, or standing in line at the bank or wherever you go. You could do that. Okay, that's one way to respond. Or you could step back from that and decide, <clears throat> how, how can I react in love? How can I respond with with love and kindness and compassion? Because that is... That is who you truly are. You're not that afraid person, right? You can be afraid and you can lash out and you can be angry and, and all those kinds of things. That's one element of, of you as a human being. We all have that, right? We all have, have that capacity to, to be anger and to cause hurt. But yet our innate nature, our true nature is to be loving, compassionate, understanding human beings and so if we step back and choose to be that person then we can go into any situation whether it's in the stores on the street at work or in our government offices etc and and feel for the people that are also in those positions of having to make rash decisions or having to make some difficult decisions about what to do to protect society as a whole I'm not saying that those decisions are right or wrong. I'm saying that those decisions need to be made um, because we don't know all the facts. I don't know all the facts. I wish I did. Every day I'm receiving new information from this doctor and that doctor and, and this person and that person. And, and you know, it's, it's confusing. So what do you do about it? Well, uh, let me share a little story with you. When I was uh, back 17 years old and I was trying to take my life because, as I mentioned before, I had this feeling of self-worth, etc., I did end up taking my life, um, but not in the sense that, that uh, I was speaking of earlier. In other words, obviously, I didn't commit suicide because I'm sitting here. I did try. But what I did was join the military. I joined the Marine Corps. Not because I had this huge sense of pride for my country, although I love my country and I wanted to serve, um, but it was because I wanted to get away from the environment that I was living in that was making me feel worthless, right? So I joined the Marine Corps and I was afraid because it was completely unknown. There was so much uncertainty in Marine Corps boot camp, as those of you who have served in any branch of the service know. Uh, those of you that are first responders, you've gone to academies, you know there's a lot of uncertainty going into stepping into those roles um, that are demanding different, new and different things from you that you haven't experienced before. And so what I did is um, I took that fear and, and I saw that there were others in my environment, others in my platoon that were even more afraid than I was. And so I took my eyes off myself and I decided there were three guys um, Hispanics that were struggling with the academic portion of boot camp and many people think that the Marines is just about learning how to kill people and how to uh, shoot well and, and, and just blow things up and you know what that's a lot to do with it but it's it's very academic oriented um, you need to be quite intelligent and, and academically adept in order to serve properly um, in any branch of the service, not just the Marine Corps, but the Marine Corps is very high on its academics. If you don't make it past, uh, if you don't make it through the academic portion of the basic training, you're out. It doesn't matter how fast you are, how, how many people you can take down in one shot or with a single blow, how strong you are, none of that matters. So these guys were struggling because of the English language. They were primarily Spanish speaking. And me, being fluent in Spanish and in English, I grew up in um, uh, being fluent. I was born in Chile. And so I decided I took it upon myself to help them. So at night when everybody else went to sleep, we would get up and we would go into the showers. We would sit on that cold, wet, musty tile floor in Paris Island, South Carolina. 
And we would open up our notebooks and I would translate that day's training into Spanish as best I could. Um, and we would have a discussion about it and then they would give me back the information in English so that I knew they understood it. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a format. I didn't have a process. I didn't sit down and say, okay, here's our lesson plan and this is what we're going to do. I just wanted to help those guys and so I dove right in. There was no prep work, nothing. There was just let's sit down and let's talk about this. And so over the weeks, um, one of the drill instructors uh, came in. It must have been about two two, three in the morning or so, we're still sitting there having these discussions about the training and a drone instructor starts yelling and screaming and swearing and coming in thinking that he's going to catch, you know, a couple of privates in the, in the, uh, in the bathroom doing, you know, what, what you shouldn't be doing, right? Um, and so uh, when he came in and is, you know, scared the bejesus out of us, you know, sitting on the floor and, you know, we're just shocked by, by uh, his, his, um, his approach. And, um, you know, once he comes in and I stood up and, you know, terrified, explained to him what I was doing and what we were doing. And he said, all right, carry on. And so I carried on. And so another week or two of this. And as a result, when the final exam portion came, me, uh, I scored the top grade in my platoon, and these other three guys scored also in the top 10. Um, as a result of my efforts, I was awarded the dress blue uniform. I was a, awarded the, the rank of private first class. I was awarded uh, the designation of platoon honor man, which is, if, if you guys uh, have served in the Marine Corps, you know what a great honor that is, right? To receive that dress blue uniform and to be designated, which is essentially the valedictorian of your class, right? Again, I wasn't the fastest or strongest, and I certainly wasn't the smartest. There were many people in there that were way, way smarter and more capable than me in many areas, me mechanically, technically, and, and otherwise. Um, but I learned that it was because I stepped up and I gave of myself to others in my time of uncertainty, my time of anxiety, my time of fear. And when I took my eyes off myself and I was able to give that time and energy to help others, come along, then you know what? We all achieve great results. And so <clears throat> I share that with you because I would like for you to consider how you can do that in your own environment right now. There's kids in your home, there's a spouse, there's a girlfriend, there's a boyfriend, there's uh, brothers and sisters, there's parents. Even, you know, if you have parents that you're living with, they're afraid right now and they don't quite know what to do because I guarantee you they've not come through uh, anything like this before. Or if you are a parent and you have children, recognize that your children are struggling with you. What is going on? Is the world going to be here tomorrow? Because there's a lot of people making those noises like eh, the world's going to end. I guarantee you the world's not going to end. Well, <laughs> I can't guarantee that, right? But I'm certain that the world is not going to end tomorrow. I, and I know this because my job is not done here. I still got a lot of work to do to guide and help other people. And um, I just have this feeling, right? This certainty that I know that my job is not done. And so I'm not going anywhere until my job is complete here. And so I'm asking you to look around in your environment and see where you can serve. Perhaps it's a neighbor. Perhaps it's, um, you know, if you live in an apartment, apartment complex, uh, there's somebody there that needs your help. Um, whether you can help go to the store for them, whether you can help cook a meal for them, whether you can help simply by talking to them, right, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Okay, wash your hands first, take your sanitizer with you and, and watch them sanitize right in front of you and, and, you know, sit six feet or 10 feet, however you want, or two feet, you know, you choose. But the point is to get out there and make yourself available to help someone else um, overcome their fears. Sing a song together. I have my trusty, beautiful guitar right here. And um, I sing songs for my wife, like last night before we, we went to sleep. I took out my guitar and, and I sang some songs for her that I knew that, that would provide her peace and rest and, and uh, allow her mind to calm down. Um, read good books. Um, so help others. Um, this is all, also a time for you to become creative, right? In, in terms of maybe there's something that you wanted to do. Maybe there's, there's something that you wanted, you wanted to start drawing. You wanted to start uh, playing an instrument or pick up the instrument again. 
maybe to start singing or dancing or painting or, um, you know, doing something, uh, write a book, right? Um, I know that a lot of you, I, I speak to a lot of executives and high-powered uh, people, um, high-performance people that have done a lot and achieved a lot in their lives that want to write a book. Well, this is a great time to do it. And if you don't know how to do it, um, I offer that service. I, I can sit down with you and we can get your book written in a very short time. Um, and we have ways to do that. So if you're interested in that, you can simply reach out to me and say, hey, let's talk about this. Um, and I can help you with that. But more than anything, um, share your story, right? Because other people learn from you. Other people learn from your experiences. Perhaps you've been through something similar like this, not in this country, perhaps in another country that have faced a time of civil unrest or or war or, you know, some sort of rationing and, and those kinds of things. Share your story because we can... We all relate to each other. You know what? If I cut myself open right now, I'm going to bleed. And if you cut yourself open right now, you're also going to bleed. That tells me that you and I are the same. Underneath this skin suit that we're wearing, underneath this hair, underneath you know the, this, this outer shell that we display to the world, you and I are the same. We are, you, we are bones and we are, we are bloods, blood cells and, and we are veins and we are... Heart, look at that, my bracelet's coming off on live TV right now. And so um, uh, we're the same. We just have a, an, a, a different appearance, outward, outwardly appearance to distinguish us one from the other <coughs> so that the world knows that I'm Bob and you're Steve and you're Joe and you're Karen and Carmen and Maria. That's the only reason. But aside from that, we're, we're the same inside. We have feelings, we, we have thoughts, we have emotions, we have a heart. We have organs. We're all the same. Um, we're going through the same stuff. It's just some of us have learned to uh, adapt to it, and some of us have not adapted to it. And it's up to you if you if you know how to to help other people. And one of the ways you can do that is by sharing your story. You can share it on video. You can share it in person with them. Um, uh, but you know, I guess the message in that is let's connect with one another, right? because that's how we're all going to get through this. Let's connect to recognize that we're all afraid. Let's connect to recognize that there's something we can do for one another. Let's connect so that we know we're not alone. Okay, so um, I'll be back with you again on another video to share some more information that hopefully will help you have a better day, have a better week, have a better month. And uh, we'll get through this quarantine together, okay? And uh, I'm going to be possibly this weekend performing um, my guitar for you. Uh, and so stay tuned for that because you're going you're gonna to love it. All right? I'm Steve Gallegos, and thanks for watching.